Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining today. I hope you are all well. My name is Riley and I'll be hosting this technical webinar for you today. Before we get started, I would just like to um, go over the notifications and sounds in Blackboard. Um, so by default, uh, some of the notification settings will be enabled during the session. So um, if ever, everyone, including you, Daniel, if you would like just just to go to the notification settings um, and just untick um, all of the boxes um, underneath notification settings and that will just make sure you won't receive any pop-ups um, or sounds during the session which, which can be disturbing. Okay, so today's technical topic um, is on advances in railway safety. Um, now, this webinar is being presented by Dr. Daniel Faraji, who's one of our lecturers at EIT. Um, just some common questions. So, um, a copy of the slides and the video recording will be sent out via email to everyone registered for this webinar. And we also provide a free certificate of attendance for live attendees. Um, there's a link and a QR code at the end of the um, session today which you can um, which you can request a certificate from now if you're not familiar with with us at EIT um, I'll just give a brief overview so we are an engineering specialist education provider um, we have a range of qualifications and courses in um, in only only fields of engineering so uh, we have professional certificate of competency courses, uh, which are our short courses. We have diplomas and advanced diplomas in the VET sector. We have undergraduate and graduate certificates. We also have bachelors and masters and a doctor of engineering degree. Um, we have industry oriented programs. So our, all of our courses are regularly updated um, to stay relevant with the industry. Um, and make sure that all of our students graduate with um, with the best outcomes. We also have um, our vo vocational programs and higher education degrees registered and accredited by the Australian government. Um, however, we do have uh, courses that are also uh, internationally recognised under one of the three international engineering accords, so the Dublin, the Sydney and the Washington Accord. We have industry experienced lecturers, um, so we, we don't have lecturers that are just, um, you know, involved in academia. We have a range of lecturers all around the world um, and they have, um, they have much industry experience, um, such, as, such as the presenter for today's webinar, Daniel. Um, all of our lecturers, um, you know, have, have a range of experience and they come from all over the world um, to deliver um, the best learning experience for our students. We also have uh, a unique delivery model, um, which includes live and interactive webinars similar to the one you're in today. However, there's um, over a hundred of you so far. Um, so um, our class sizes are, are much smaller than that. Um, we also have, a, you know, I already talked about the ex our expert lecturers uh, from around the world, our dedicated learning support. We have uh, dedicated learning support offices for our students and state-of-the-art technologies such as hands-on workshops, remote laboratories and simulation software. Okay, so I will now hand over to Dr. Daniel Faraji, um, uh, who is presenting this webinar today. Um, I'll hand over to you now, Daniel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Riley, for your help and coordination. Uh, uh, my name is Daniel uh, Faraji. I'm a Bachelor of Science in Railway Engineering, uh, and also I'm uh, a Master of Disaster Management uh, in the doctoral courses. I, I'm holding the DBA Doctor of Business Administration. Just to share, check uh, everything fine, voice from your end, everything fine. You can yes. also type in the chat box also, guys. Okay, Thanks, thank Dan. you, Riley. Thank you for confirmation. So uh, from my uh, 
experience uh, right now i'm till uh, to, uh, end of the 2020 joined to eit uh, as a uh, lecturer in the railway uh, courses and also safety courses uh, my background uh, is uh, about the railway also especially specifically in the metro lines i have uh, involved in the uh, rolling stock management systems uh, and also the selection of the rolling stocks. I've been the rolling stock management uh, uh, roles in different uh, cities and also different metro lines. Uh, right now, I'm uh, uh, engineer manager of the uh, design and build of the metro lines uh, in uh, carriage uh, line two and. Uh, besides of that, uh, I'm a, a, a member of the uh, development group in the RISP. RISP is the Rail Industry Safety and Standard Board of uh, Australia and New Zealand. Uh, right now, uh, uh, we have uh, developed uh, AS7517 uh, and uh, we are uh, on the way to the other two other standards. One is for the rolling stack the braking system, another is for railway joints. So thank you guys for attending. I think 120 people right now joining us. So let's just start. Uh, because this is the uh, topic of very general safety in railway, for example, also advances. Uh, I decided to uh, warm up, for example, from the basics, some basics that we deliver in our uh, courses in the EIT about the risk management, also introduction, also we have brief uh, introduction, also refresher uh, slides for it, and then we will go to uh, some innovation and technology regarding the safeties or safety advances right now in the australia base and also in all over the world uh, the other things is uh, we will become more familiar this is the unique uh, what we deliver in eit uh, in many cases you just for example get the some uh, course book uh, that they don't uh, you don't have any sense in the industry by the way, in the industry, we are dealing with these standards. The standard is very important for us and also uh, finding and how, how to use them and also become familiar with them is the advances for every uh, engineer. And it helped you to uh, your career uh, journey. And then at the end, uh, we have a Q&A and uh, please keep your questions in your mind or type in the chat box and then we will deal with the, all the questions. So let's start uh, with the definition of the risk. Uh, what is the risk? In this slide and next slide, I want to uh, discuss about risk a bit little more. So we know that the risk has a two parameter, two key parameter. One is the likelihood and the other is severity. The, all the risks can be uh, mentioned in the risk matrix. So we can have one axis as a severity and one axis as a likelihood. And in combination of these two, we, we will get the one point and also that point can be a uh, show the number of the risk it's a look like the, for example a, a, a number between zero to one so based on the appetite that our organization or even individuals has maybe we rank the risks so normally we deal with the high risk in our uh, studies in our reports in our organization we just want to find every risk that in our systems. But normally we will deal uh, as a, for example, uh, countermeasures or barriers to the high risk 
By the way, we will keep and monitor every risk in our systems. Uh, so another additional description to the risk is that the, re the significance of risk depend on the potential worst outcomes. That is the consequence of it. And for example, accident and incident when occur. So we, ha we have we don't then we have uh, we don't have any risk it's uh, it is it's come to the world of the event so when we deal with the risk until it happened when it happened it's not our risk it's a one uh, accident or incident in our system so we will do post risk uh, procedures in our uh, systems in an, in other in another word, risk is the likelihood of the an accident or incident arising from hazard. So from right now, in every course books, in every uh, material books, so we will deal when we are uh, looking uh, looking for the safety. We will dealing with the risk. We will deal with the uh, likelihood and also the word hazard so hazard is a uh, potential risks and significance of this uh, potential worst outcome uh, can be as we said it can be an event and what is the hazard by individual is mentioned here is an uh, is a source of potential injury or harmful event uh, or ill health to the people. So this is the uh, most important for us that the people, workers, users uh, may be subjected to the some risks. So we call them hazard. So the, the, this definition is can be varied from this each source to other source, but we deal with the some standard based and approved uh, definition uh, here in this uh, webinar. And this, this definition may be included also for, uh, for damage, harm, or uh, property or other environments also, as a, we can consider all, all of this also as a hazard in the system. So why we are looking for the hazards? Because uh, when we want to manage things, we we want to our utmost uh, goal is to manage the safety in our systems in our organization to prevent accident and in, in, incident. Uh, when we have an accident and incident, it's another, um, uh, for example, branch of the. Say, uh, risk management. We, we we need to learn about the accidents, but till now we are uh, before the any accidents. We are dealing with the risks. So, what we can do that to identify the hazards, to find it, to uh, investigate and find as much as possible the hazards, put them in the cases. Uh, we call it hazard log in the some projects. We call it, for example, in the uh, uh, in the hazard logs. We will code it, and then we will manage it. When we find all the hazard in our systems, we can manage it also as well. So until uh, now, we find the basics, but this is the unique what we have in Australia. Uh, Australian Railway uh, under umbrella of the RISP, risk industry, safety and the standard board. We call it RISP. Let me write here. Oh. Sorry. R I S S P. So this is this organization is very famous. I'm from 2017, 2015. They handle all the uh, 
code of practice, all the guidelines, all the standards uh, uh, regarding the safety in Australia. They handle all of them, and right now they are developing uh, uh, many uh, standards uh, regarding this specific safety matters. Uh, and they are approved in Australia and also New Zealand as a, a standard. So this uh, organization has an, uh, uh, one product. This product is ARRM. And all the uh, accidents and also all the risks will be gathered and also record there. Till now, more than the 200,000 records from 2017, which is launched, officially launched, recorded on in this uh, uh, product, in this uh, uh, cloud-based uh, uh, software. And so you can go there uh, and find the, and learn from the past exp experience, past incidents, and also find uh, a lot of useful uh, data that uh, from those data that uh, th those are specifically big data we will uh, at the end of the this session we will uh, look about the innovations and one of the innovations in the safety uh, management systems is the big data how to we are dealing and this is one of the unique things that uh, in Australian railway we can find and if you are the member of the RISP, if you are the operator, if you are the RIM, railway infrastructure manager, you're in uh, industry, if you are a supplier, you can join uh, and also member of the, this uh, unique software. And also you can find and learn from the big uh, operator. From the, uh, if you are a small, for example, businesses, you can find the risks what kind of the risk will be, for example, also uh, affected your business, affected your operation, affected your uh, current organization. Or you are, if you are big, you can find the best way you can optimize, for example, your uh, structure, your uh, procedures to reach the as low as possible uh, injury and also, for example, uh, improve your safety cases and safety cultures in your industry. Just uh, some, for example, data that comes from this uh, Unix software is that uh, mentioned here. Uh, we have, a, for example, a train collision as a, one of the source of the risk. It is the uh, one of the category of the hazards that we. Uh, dealing with right now in the Australian railway. Uh, train collision can be, for example, in the level crossing in the, for the workers. But safety workers is the, uh, or safe work is a uh, phrase that we are uh, very commonly used in the Australian railways, the culture and also in uh, literatures. So uh, those for the board, just for example, running the line, they are maintainer, they can be a uh, safe work that comes to the tracks to maintain, to supervise, to inspect uh, the, all the assets uh, that we have in the uh, lines, in the railway lines. So the fatalities, for example, the, uh, what uh, this uh, two, from 2017 to 2020, gather the data uh, that this uh, kind of the uh, hazard is the highest for example defined that it's the highest hazard that we have in the railway ma railway maintenance jobs uh, so and also it means that for example the 0 0.92 fatality weighted injury per year uh, FWI per year, and also it's uh, look like the one fatality every 30 months. Also, it can be also give us some reports, very nice reports, uh, as a, for example, all the categories of the uh, this uh, for the for some risk result of the collision between the rolling stocks and also uh, any uh, individuals in their lines, maybe they are 
uh, the, based on the place, it's uh, not in active, for example, crossing lines in the uh, all over the lines except crossing lines because in the crossing lines we don't have users, uh, dedicated users, and also railway workers. Maybe we have uh, ordinary people. Maybe we have uh, cars and also pedestrians there. So. Uh, if we exclude all of them, so for the we will uh, catch the data dedicated to the railway workers, and the share, we, we find that, for example, the share of the uh, fatalities uh, and also this kind of this, uh, risk is very high between the uh, workers that we collide with the collisions. The other, also we have, we have some derailments in the maintenance yards. We have uh, uh, in the normally in the maintenance yard, there is no passengers. So these are very low. And uh, at the second place, we have the train collision. Uh, also, for example, uh, with the other trains. So we, we call it, uh, this kind of a collision is uh, crash worthiness and also this depend on the uh, which type of trains collide to each other. Normally, passenger trains, if they uh, two passenger trains collide to each other, so it, ha it is a uh, for example social catastrophe. Uh, so by by the way, uh, we have also maintenance vehicle derailments. So maintenance ve vehicle collision with other train runnings normally. Uh, it can also affect a lot if the one side is the passenger trains. Uh, it will be very dangerous for uh, passengers that are in the trains. Uh, so uh, we f we can when we find this is this data is just a sample of the data what we have in the uh, in databases in the uh, big data that uh, has been built and also. Uh, becoming the new, uh, very unique uh, database all around, uh, around the world, and also in many uh, cases we don't have this kind of categorized and also this kind of uh, uh, databases in one places. Thanks to risk because they they do that for the uh, Australian rail market to this, uh, and uh, it's very helpful for the management, for the barriers, so for what kind of focus we need to that. For example, if the work is the problem, it's the it's a very frequent one. So if we uh, need, we will regulate there, we will uh, put some standards there in these cases for uh, other cases. So uh, the challenge that I want to, uh, for example, you uh, answer this challenge in the chat box if, if possible. Uh, from your point of view, I have a question. What is the safest railway line in the world? Can you, for example, mention some of your answers in the chat box, guys? No line. Sadiq. Mr. Sadiq from Bangladesh mentioned no line. Can you explain more? No railway. So somehow, yes, now. Those, <laughs> the answer is that those lines that uh, closed. Those line that there is no uh, rolling stack on there. The, for example, uh, the uh, abandoned railways are safest railways line in the world. Uh, and for example, we, we can say that the safest train in the world is the train that don't move. If we have a movement, definitely we have some risk, and also we need the safety management system. Uh, why we ask this question is that uh, about the, because we, are, we want to uh, manage this risk, and also the risk management is, uh, as we discussed, uh, is the uh, 
uh, ultimate goals for the all the railways our operators and auto management systems any organization need to have a safety management and also in uh, uh in the standard cases we call it s m s it's not short message but look like the sms if you see also sms from right now you may be uh flashback to this seminar and also find that there is a another issue and another abbreviation for the sms uh, risk management is a process to ensure that your organization is safe and also you are in the control to re or eliminate all the uh, hazards or all the risk in the systems or you can find some things that to uh, minimize their likelihood or severity so maybe you cannot for example minimize the likelihood but you can have some countermeasures. You can uh, do, for example, plan for the post accidents. In these cases, you will, uh, this is look like a, a countermeasure to the earthquake, to the floods. Uh, maybe we have a lot of earthquake, but we can, for example, right now by the advances in the technologies, uh, we can use the consequences so this is the uh, safety culture and also our safety look uh, at the, some some problems and also what circumstances we are dealing with in the railway and uh, it's also about ensuring that the, uh, uh, how we should uh, have something and also the, the, the uh, safety controls in the uh, some places uh, get the consequences. Yeah, Roger. They have uh, advances in the technology. Uh, so a uh, risk management process is uh, some step, has some steps. So uh, we can first, we should identify the hazards. As we said, we will put all the hazards and also the, uh, identified all the uh, risk in the risk register or hazard log. There is a different abbreviation for it. Uh, so working out how likely, and also after that we know the hazards, so we will uh, investigate the likelihood. We, have, we, we will find the likelihood. After that we will find the potential consequences and also quantify it in many cases. Uh, for example, if it happened, how much we will lose? Uh, if it happened, how many people may be injured or uh, unfortunately may die? So we will find this kind of issues very in the, in the basic phases. And after that, we will uh, deal with the safety controls. Uh, as we discussed, we have an ARRM. It's not only, for example, uh, this risk model, Australian risk model, is not only for uh, gathering data or, uh, for example, uh, put the data in the one Excel file or one database. Uh, we, ha we have a, something like this. Right? Can you, can, can you, uh, familiar with kind of uh, shape, it's a bow tie. So in the bow tie analysis, first, before the accident, we will uh, find the hazard. Uh, let me, what's happened? So we have a hazard here. And after that, we have the consequences, and uh, here is the event. From here, we have the fault tree analysis. We find the, which kind of faults maybe uh, goes to the one event, and also after here, the event tree analysis. So from the event, we will find the consequences and for when we find the every fault every hazard we can have uh, some countermeasure some barriers and also some barriers for the events before they happened for us 
maybe we can deal with them and also in these cases we can monitor them more effectively uh, and also uh, upgrading uh, in some cases if it's needed for, in, for the system for our organization so uh, here is the another issues uh, the steps is the safety controls in the, in the before the monitoring we need to uh, after the consequence of likelihood, we need to have a safety control. Uh, in the safety control, uh, we, 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 are, we, are we are looking for the... Sorry, uh, everything fine? Can you hear me, guys? If, if if the voice, everything is okay, put the thumbs up, a smiley face in the chat I think you might have just uh, dropped out for a second there, Daniel, but otherwise all good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. So, uh, somebody, yeah, yeah. Um, because I, I, I find uh, messages that, that uh, and now I hear my voices. It was a strange for me. Uh, so, when we eliminate hazard, we need to uh, avoid the risk. This is the exact and also academic base or a standard base uh, of it. We need to. Uh, uh, avoid the risk, uh, but but many cases we cannot avoid the risk. As uh, so as we discuss, uh, we we need we have we have the risk, so we will deal with the risk in many cases. So we will uh, find ways to reduce the consequence and likelihood of it in uh, other uh, cases. So I speed up to catch all the slides. So in the uh, safety controls, for example, we when we want to eliminate, we uh, remove a rail vehicle of a certain type from the operation. For example, renovation uh, is a, one of the options that we have in the uh, elimination. Or, for example, if we, have, we are dealing with the uh, old trains combined, for example, uh, modern trains, we need to have a plan to, uh, for example, uh, retire the old one and also uh, put the new one with a higher safety uh, technology and advances in, in, in the system. So, or maybe we can stop performing an activity or practice, for example, uh, in, the, in, the, in the systems, uh, in many cases, uh, or an example in the signaling systems, for example, we perform, for example, manual, uh, switching, but we, we can shift to automatic and also CTCs, for example, uh, uh, advanced uh, technology in the signaling systems. By, by the way, uh, we have all, all the, for example, advances, but we, have, we, have, we, have, we still have a some risk. There is no uh, railway, as we discussed, that have a moving movement on it, and we cannot say, for example, this system has not, uh, for example, furthermore uh, any risk there. So we, we will uh, we need to deal with them. The deal is the minimize and things about the uh, some cases. Maybe we need to substitution with isolation and also engineering controls. Uh, so. The, these are the step by step and also the uh, effectiveness from here to uh, other slides will be de decrease. Uh, minimization, for example, in substitution can be uh, as a, a replace an item or start performing an activity or practice different ways. It looks like, for example, uh, what we I can in the uh, elimination, but here is just, for example, small changes in, or maybe big changes in some cases. Uh, isolation is a prevent access to hazards, as we discussed. Uh, for example, right now, uh, uh, trespassing to the railway lines uh, based on the findings of the statistics, we find that we need to focus on uh, if you. Uh, literature review right now a lot of uh, 
uh, research or dealing to uh, avoid the people, for example, come to the railway lines, those area that forbidden uh, people goes by, but in some cases, for example, we, we still have a trespassing in the, in the metro lines, in the urban lines, in the uh, uh, between cities, intercities uh, lines. So this is the goals. And one of the innovation here is that in some cases, for example, in the Melbourne uh, lines and also in some uh, rural uh, and uh, uh, regional railways, we are seeing that they are using grants to uh, to find any trespassers and also they will warn them, they will maybe uh, punish them immediately as they find it's kind of the near misses uh, if you're familiar with the uh, uh, terminology of the risks near misses is uh, those kind of hazards many cases we pass them uh, by chance for example we we will not uh, for example face the accident accident or uh, for example huge catastrophic things they passed uh, for example, one time, two times, ten times, but there is, if that, that risk happens, definitely, for example, the collision between the people and the, any kind of the uh, uh, rolling stocks in the lines, uh, we have injured and also maybe uh, in the most cases we have fatality. Uh, so it's uh, really important because of that there are, for example, thinking or uh, uh, advancing in the for example, workers, uh, the uh, equipment in the workers side, and also from the other people that may be tested, start thinking and also using the countermeasure to isolate it. Uh, and other things, maybe we uh, fencing, for example, the lines, it is costly but because of that they are dealing with the culturing system and also uh, supervision and also uh, surveillance systems. So and another thing is, is the engineer controls, upgrade the railway cars, maybe they can detect, for example, in future, uh, any kind of the obstacles in the lines. Uh, right now, some trams has, but by the way, normal uh, rowing is like normal locomotives, normal EMUs or DMUs uh, for the passenger systems or freight system, they don't have right now, by the way, if, for example, they find that it's worthy or uh, for example, some places needed, we will definitely in future make this kind of advances for the rolling strike also implement automated technology, for example, automatic brakes. Uh, they can com configure, for example, uh, obstacle detections in the uh, in the rolling strikes with the, for example, brake systems. It's very easy right now if we have a detection uh devices so we can do, deal with them and other controls but uh, less effective is the administrative controls we will need to for example carry out out trainings uh, adopt a new procedures and uh, in, for from the last things is the personal protective equipment uh, this is very uh, vast for example uh area right now uh, a lot of uh, things are uh, happens in the previous uh, technology we have a high visibility clothes we have a uh, high for example uh, a shield for the people and also hard hats for for the uh, every uh, for example People should wear the gloves, we should wear the uh, safety hats. Uh, but right now, we are thinking more smart in the Australian Railway. Also, they are uh, minimize, for the minimizing the uh, PPE, personal protective equipment. They also have uh, some new release that we need to go to uh, smart things. What is that as smart? We will uh, come back to the next slides and I will show what is the advances for the this, uh, exactly these. Uh, so here is the hierarchy of the controls, as we discussed from the most effective to the least effective. 
uh, we have the elimination as a first step. So, and also most effectively, by the way, we cannot maybe physically remove any hazards. So we will replace or isolate by the, for example, engineer, some engineering controls, uh, or we, we may, for example, change the way of the people work. Uh, here is the allocation, for example, the problem solution of the allocation and also the supervising that, uh, for example, we have a temporary signaling, for example, ban for some uh, part of the railways can be another uh, option here. And at last, in the this pyramid, in the uh, uh, last step, we have the protect of the worker by the personal protective equipment. Uh, and right now, many cases, we find that we need to more advances in this case. The, uh, we will find some good example in the next few slides. So we, uh, till now we find that we need to uh, say safety management systems, as we said, it's a SMS. So what is it? It's a kind of the uh, plan, do, check and act cycle. Guys, can you know or familiar with this uh, terminology? PDCA, we can also play chat box. So it's Deming uh, cycle. Uh, the Deming cycle means, uh, and also goals is that we need to uh, have a planning at the first step. Uh, in the first step we, in the, uh, we planning is the hazard. Yes, uh, Bogang. Thank you for your answer. PDCA is a, a plan to check and act. So in the plan, we will uh, assess and also gather the hazards for us. And also then we, uh, when the, we want to operate, we will develop, implement, and apply uh, the processes uh, and also measures, and also barriers as we uh, find in the planning phase because we in the planning phase we identify hazards we find that the safety deals in the operation we will act this is the do operation and in the operation we need to do something uh, after that we need to evaluate our uh, for example countermeasures uh, is it working or not we will find it in some, for example, trial and error, uh, or for in the, some trials, we will uh, act as a test systems, uh, or for example, self-test, or maybe, for example, we uh, uh, intended hazards, we will uh, make it and also find that it's the barrier is working or not. So in this case, we monitor. We monitor is also from the learning from the past events and also learning from the similar uh, rule of thumbs that we have in the uh, projects. Yeah, exactly. Postimo. Uh, so improvements uh, also is the take actions to uh, uh, continually improve the safety management system. So when we find that, for example, there is a bug, there is, a, for example, lack of the legacy, then there is a lack of the, for example, procedures, there is a lack of the training systems, we will uh, do that. And then in the, in the PDCA of the uh, uh, safety management systems, uh, the context of the organization will be challenged and also the, we provide the input uh, to the planning phases. And uh, leadership also has a uh, here is a leadership in the core of the uh, uh, this uh, cycle. We, uh, it's a driving forces of uh, for the PDCA cycle. The leaders should be care about the safety. The culture of the safety should be implemented all over the organization. And also, we need support in the support. Uh, uh, of the safety cultures, that means that we need the functionals, uh, functionalized, uh, supportive to all the uh, safety or SMS elements. So there is uh, 
some other uh, records that we we will deal with the better risk management and right now it is one of the advances in the past slide we will we find that what we uh, or for example safety managers or safety uh, standard boards uh, think about the uh, safety management system but right now the advance in these cases is that they they want to improve they want to improve the risk management systems and this is the what uh, is the challenges and debatable from the all over the world here is the for example comes from the uh, european uh, uh, standard board uh, technical tri uh, technical railway uh, institute so that they are the handle of the uh, uh, legal things in the euro all over the europe and also for example they uh, co they closely work with the uic in the uh, in the normal railways in the uh, all all the railways that uh, managed in the european countries so they they think and also they find that for example they we have we need to do some things to have a better uh, risk management it's a kind of the for example share awareness we need to also culturalize for for example for the trespassing if you find uh, the or follow up some uh, operators especially uh, railway uh, passenger operators uh, are also uh, it's uh, uh, right now railway operators uh in australia they are they are they are they have a plan to uh announcement for, they have a uh, some uh gatherings and also they they make the uh for example in the in the trains they uh have a, some uh pis system in the, the passenger information system they show the uh, for example what is the consequences if you trespass the uh, lines and maybe in some cases they show the some fatalities and previous uh, uh, things and also this is one of the things that we, in the, all the news will be broadcasted uh, they, they want to know and increase the awareness about uh, this kind of the for example issues uh, and and other things here uh, it's not for example uh hold the things is, is not our uh goals we just want to know that kind of the advances that are right now is the the things to the better risk management here is a sample another another sample that uh they are dealing is about the uh, yeah uh, uh network rail and also it's an uh, operator in the uk they are thinking about the healthier and safer rails uh, by uh, in the outer uh, side we have the kind of the risk that uh, we are facing in the railway systems and also they uh, organizing this is the kind of the pdca but by, by the way in these cases we can see they uh, uh, add one step more on it so uh, the organizing uh, for control so policies planning and also uh, organizing the controls and also the securing the cooperation and, uh, and uh, competence development of employees so they ask all the on the ROs that uh, uh, hire more advanced and also more technical more trained people and here is the uh, why we eit we are thinking about the, uh, some courses in the railway systems and railway and uh, railway safety systems uh, so also the, they, they they also planning and also monitoring these two steps is the same but the, for the uh, right now the pdca is evolving and also it's improving it's not only four steps uh, based on the they are thinking uh, different right now to advance the pdca cycle so 
the first part as we want to refreshing the safety uh, definitions safety knowledge of your side and also deliver a brief uh, about the safety and also risk hazards and also some terminology and also the finding the some advances in the uh, management systems by the way right now we want to uh, go to another steps of seminar uh, we want to talk about the technology we want to talk about the advances we want to talk about the innovation till now uh, thank you for uh, uh, being with us till now uh, and also we will go to another part of the these issues so safety is uh, we learned that it's a priority so uh, we, we are right now thinking about new technology to deal with the potential threats uh, that uh, maybe can be forcing by, by the way we are challenging with a lot of things they are new for example hazards are coming uh, if you for example follow the revenues or accidents we will find that um, we are having the environmental uh, changes in, all over the world and also many railways are right now dealing with the flood for example and also they are doing uh, or thinking about the harsh in the uh, environment so also the, the something is changing and all of us right now in the ordinary lives uh, are experiencing them uh, so by by the way we have uh, for example some dark uh, threads that we don't know uh, ambiguous threads facing these uh, threads uh, are not identified or uh, uh, say it's categorized or uh, configured and configured yes but by the way we have we have advances in technology we have, we have a lot of things right now that is very uh, easy uh, can be uh, mentioned in the for example in nowadays the robotics is good uh, so uh, what are the emerging technologies this is the completely different uh, and also new uh, things that we are having the railway literature right now and so guys and also if you are interested in the uh, research in the uh, railway safety or even other places the railways are going to be more advanced so and these advances can be categorized into a lot of things. These are the samples, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, integrating BIM and safety. What does it mean, for example? Uh, we had a uh, fun webinar. Uh, I guess you can find the uh, recorded video. Uh, it was in the April. Uh, we delivered the digital engineering in the railway and also the, the, there is a dedicated uh, standard part one of the digital engineering in railway uh, based on the AES standard uh, uh, so they are standardizing that uh, uh, you need to uh, think uh, more digital this is the advances in the technology and also this is the industry for technology also uh, that are experiencing right now uh, so in these cases we can easily do uh, more things uh, in, uh, from our side so also for example uh, from the uh, from the uh, workers and also from PPE as we discussed wearable sensing devices these are the advances in their normal protective uh for the workers so there, this is kind of the smart well uh or smart uh protective devices maybe for example we will see the hats safety hats can have some sensors can have for example dealing with the things right now uh if you find for example normal or or then not normal it's advanced uh digital watches 
so those are also doing something like that. If you have hurt, if you, for example, uh, have an accident that we cannot, for example, do anything, they will, for example, call the emergencies. So this kind of uh, thinking also is uh, coming to the railway safety wearable for the uh, workers, for the users. Uh, we have also site sensors could be uh, one of the good example that is uh, is a uh, before that it was in uh, for example in the leon metro line four uh, when i 10 years uh, ago i saw it uh, detection of the any obstacle that comes to the line because of that line was the completely automatic systems they used the driverless terrains so then there wasn't any there wasn't any driver to see uh, any people in the lines, any obstacles in the lines, especially in the short lines for the metro lines. So they find, for example, some detectors. Uh, anybody goes to the lines, they will definitely cut off the uh, electrify, electrification system. So uh, these kind of issues uh, develop at that time, but the, that time was very costly. But right now, sensoring systems, uh, thanks to advances in the in the uh, technologies, are right now using everywhere. Uh, uh, so, uh, stay safe apps. Uh, so we have also uh, some apps uh, development in the uh, in in the workers and also many many cases. For example, wearable can be. Uh, connect with the, some apps or, for example, in the, they can report from the uh, uh, situation or, or, or status of the workers. As we talked about, the rounds is very, very uh, trend uh, and also uh, coming into the advances for the rounds and also asset management monitoring. We are right now have a dealing with the uh, uh, video capturing and also video uh, maintenance uh, trains and also maybe in future just uh, with the, uh, your mobile phones uh, you can find uh, uh, a lot of things uh, from the for the for example railway uh, defects for the rail defects for the rolling stocks you can monitor them in future via normal uh, cameras from your phones and artificial, uh, artificial intelligence and also big data. So guys, uh, let me speed up. We have only five minutes till the end of the uh, this webinar. Uh, so we need uh, some uh, advances of the augmented reality and also virtual reality. Right now we are thinking about the some kind of the metaverse and also some kind of the uh, uh, other re realities that we are dealing and also we are familiar with kind of this and also they uh, can show us for example some trials uh, some trials can be uh, happened in the uh, for example not real world in the simulated world uh, so it can uh, reduce the cost it can be uh, is in for the maintaining and uh, also for the training so this is kind of the things it's looked like the uh, for example the movies for the uh, avengers movies we have seen a lot of things like this but frankly it's coming and very easily it can be uh, seen for example in the next few years they are integrating to the systems and also a lot of people are going there Another issue that I mentioned that uh, integrating BIM and safety, that it's uh, digital engineering. So in the digital engineering, we have the digital twins for the uh, structure, for this uh, infrastructures, for the operations. Uh, and in these cases, we can, for example, uh, find easily and better, for example, hazards, any other hazards in geological issues in the faults in the earthquake regarding the floods so they help us to manage better the safety in the uh, our systems here I, I just uh, uh, met, uh, how we 
uh, achieve to the digital engineering as I told you uh, you can uh, flash back to the previous slides uh, just mentioned that uh, there is a standard this is a standard developed in 2020 and uh, also it's uh, evolving uh, about this and also uh, the uh, ISO standard is right now dealing with the stage two by, by the way uh, in Australia we have a standard uh, right now is developing and part one has been published officially AS 739.1 recently published and also this standard deal with the digital engineering in the railways and it's uh, one of the advances and also in future you will and also in the operations as we told that uh, IoT uh, is coming and it uh, comes to uh, smart uh, our uh, even helmets our things our everything not only for example it's, it's for the television and also in the other devices that we are using electric devices by the way we can uh, get this concept from the IoT and also from for example there, there can be communication between the trains and also helmets of the workers uh, in future and also they can detect each other and in these cases they will not for example uh, any heating for example or unfortunately it's uh, for the workers and trains and also rolling stuff uh, thanks to technology also we can also use such kind of things in the wearable things in the headset in the a smart wear or in the belt, any, anything uh, can be also used in the different cases. So uh, here is the some procedures that we how we can, for example, from the things, uh, how we can convert it to IoT. Uh, we need the smart wearable things, and also we need to gateway from which is installed uh, also in the, uh, for example, variable device. And also we need the communication to the cloud-based servers and also online bases. And thanks to advances in the technology and also 5G and also GSM right now uh, we are using. So this kind of communication is going uh, more advances and also more ordinary things. Right now, maybe we are facing some difficult in the broadbands by by the uh, uh, comings and also the uh, when many many people forecast that, that after 5g we will have uh, definitely these iot levels uh, for the things all over the world and especially in the industry uh, one of the interesting from my side is the drones so the rounds is uh, widely using and also is, is uh, vast spreading in the all over the railways uh, I, I i heard some uh, uh here is the link it's very useful link you can see that the rounds become new rail workers even uh, it is a good advance on by, by the way it's affecting maybe in future uh, some sort of jobs in the railway industry so be careful it's uh, it's not only useful maybe uh, for your uh, for, for your for your future of the works uh, it may be affected us <laughs> by the way uh, so we need to think uh, broad uh, they are useful this kind of technology is uh, using uh, to maintain the uh, lines to find the defects uh, to uh, as I told you to uh, uh, keep the security of the lines and also investigation about the uh, accidents uh, or uh, some cases for example uh, for the bridge inspections we cannot for example easily reach many cases in many sides of the bridge they easily can go and also there even in the tunnels in the below pictures you can see in the tunnels in the uh, platforms under platforms those those uh, places that uh, it's very hard to reach and use this kind of uh, technology and very useful 
uh, tied to uh, image uh, processing. And this is the advances. This is a, one of the goals of this, uh, this webinar. Uh, the Australia is, has only, only standard entity. They are thinking about the operational requirement of the drones. So this is a very helpful uh, standard. Uh, it is uh, published, and uh, so in many, some cases when they are not published, I recommend, for example, you can use the uh, draft versions. The uh, the standard uh, procedures that they have a development group, then they will publish for the uh, draft things. Uh, after that, uh, when they publish the draft, uh, so it is you have three months, two months to review the uh, standards freely, and also by the way it's published, maybe you need to ask your organization to find it. And the last slide, I guess, this is the big data, and also what we have discussed at the beginning of the uh, this webinar and this session. Is that the Australia's uh, Australian rail risk model, uh, the model based on the PUTAI, and also it has a, some integrated software, isograph, and also so they integrated uh, some software and also uh, customize it for the railway needs in the Australian market, and also uh, they are using uh, some. Uh, in this model in all the railways except uh, light rail, heritage railway and also train railways. By the way, in the uh, intercities, in the regional, they, they are using this kind of the, uh, data and also gathering and also from it. We are right now knows where we can focus uh, and how we can gain more uh, in the, our uh, risk uh, strategies and also risk management systems. So, guys, thank you. This, this was my last slide. Uh, Riley, thank you for your cooperation, for your uh, answering the questions. Right now, if you want to add something, uh, I'm here to. I'm waiting for the QA session. If you have time. Great, thank you very much, Daniel. Um, really appreciate that. Yeah, and uh, there's lots of you know great feedback coming through the chat as well. Um, and yeah, we'll get to the Q and A in a in a minute. Um, just before we get there, I'd just like to just go over the upcoming webinars. Um, so we have um, mm -hmm. we have a couple upcoming over the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, we also have a lot scheduled in August as well. Um, so the next two, uh, the one next week is on gaming technology to improve industrial digital twins. Um, and we also have a webinar on the importance of systematic, uh, systemic view in uh, accident and incident investigation. Um, so that could be, yeah, depending on which, uh, which area you're focused in. Um, just just go to our events page on our website and just have a look at our webinars there. Um, there's a range that you can register for over the next month or two. Um, and just a quick overview of um, our courses again. I know I mentioned them at the start of the webinar, but um, this just gives you a good overview of kind of when we schedule our major courses and um, yeah, so our short courses, which are called Professional Certificate of Competency courses, um, and our diplomas and advanced diplomas, they're scheduled throughout the year. So, um, so they all have different intakes and they all run at different frequencies. So, um, so it's best to check uh, those ones individually and there are a lot of those courses. Um, however, we do, you can see there, like our undergraduate certificates, our bachelor's degrees, our doctor of engineering um, is starting on the 13th of February next year. Our graduate certificates and master of engineering degrees are starting the 2nd of January 
um, next year. Um, and also, uh, if you're so all those courses I just mentioned were our online courses. We're most mainly focused in the online space. However, um, we do offer bachelor's, master's, and doctor of engineering degrees on campus in Australia. We have two campuses in Australia, um, one in Perth and one in Melbourne. Um, so our, on, our next on-campus intakes are uh, in 20th of February next year. Um, and I do recommend looking at the schedule page on our website, um, which shows you all of our upcoming courses and intakes. So um, as promised, uh, we do provide a free certificate of attendance for our technical webinars. Um, so if you would like to, um, if you've got your smartphone there, you can um, you can scan the QR code there on the screen, which will take you to a short um, form or survey to fill out. Um, but I will post the link in the chat box now. So, um, so that will take you to a short form. It will only take a minute or two. Um, you can do it. Um, you can do it now. You can do it after the webinar. It, um, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. However, um, I will send. Uh, I will send the certificates uh, to you a bit later um, today. Um, so yeah, just let me know if there's any issues um, with that. But yeah, you can use the link or the QR code. It doesn't matter. Um, but just just fill out and submit the um, the short form and, and then I'll send you um, your certificate for the session. Yeah, I'll leave that up for a few more seconds. And the link is in the chat box as well. Okay, so now we'll do our Q&A session. Um, I will I will skip to the last slide though, um, just because we have all of our contact details on there. And um, if anyone needs to go uh, now, thank you very much for attending today. And we really appreciate um, your uh, your attendance. And um, yeah, but otherwise, if you have time and if or if you have questions for either of us, please um, please put them in the chat box, and we'll uh, we'll be online for the next you know few minutes or so depending on how many questions come through. Um, there was a question I did see, Daniel, mm -hmm. from um, uh, from Iftika Ali. Um, mm -hmm. the, qu the question was about uh, why companies only share an incident slash accident report within um, organization in, in their opinion should be shared publicly so more more industry yeah. will be aware of and people will learn the lessons out of it yeah uh, maybe uh, you mentioned about the ARRM that's uh, only for example members of the risk we can uh, reach there uh, by the way uh, so this is the data and the data is useful I, I agree with you from my point of view it, it should be free of charge and also accessible from the all over the world. By the way, in some organizations, so for example, RISP, I guess, uh, they, are, uh, they don't have any, for example, other kind of the, uh, revenues. They just uh, publish the standards and also something like that. So maybe they, they need to uh, evolve and also so be in the market. Because of that, they uh, gather the data and also maybe they have some benefit of it. Uh, but uh, I agree with him. It, even uh, at least they should reveal, for example, some data or some good uh, practices from uh, that uh, platforms for the public people. Thanks, Daniel. Um... Thank you, guys. I don't think there's no, any more no. questions at the moment. Yeah, I, I believe you like this. I'm, I'm not seeing in the most recent chat any 
Other if uh, guys, if you have uh, ask uh, any questions, you can also paste it here again, so we can see the uh, your did, questions um, in detail. I did see a question earlier. Um, oh. Someone was asking um, about our railway courses. So as as far as I'm mm -hmm. aware, so we have uh, we have some. Uh, graduate certificates in railway engineering um, as well as our master of engineering in civil railway infrastructure um, yeah, exactly. so it, um, whoever that person was um, uh, please go to our website and have a look at those courses um, otherwise um, just contact us uh, contact one of our course advisors and they'll be uh, more than happy to help you Um, Shep also has the same question about the, uh, the advanced diploma. We have a uh, graduate certificate courses for the railway infrastructure and railway operation. One of the uh, lessons is the uh, railway management. So uh, in this course has a four uh, topic for the and four uh, units. So one of them is the railway management. We have it. Sorry, I'm just reading through all the the mm -hmm. messages. Um, Muhammad, uh, we unfortunately we don't have any free courses. Um, however, we do provide these um, these webinars, these technical webinars for free, um, and we do these webinars about every. We have one almost almost every week or or every two weeks. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks, Krishna. We um. Colin, yeah. oh, sorry, Dan. Yeah. Collins has a question. The most appropriate right now in the traditional uh, way uh, is the Hamlet or uh, the uh, visible, for example. Uh, uh, the suits and also wearing parts and also gloves by the way as we said uh, recently it's going for for example some uh, smart things and also it's also you start from the hamlet again so the safety uh, hats and also maybe in future in near future we can see them in the all over the market do you see digital twins uh Malibu, yes uh, as i told you for example right now uh in some cases digital engineering uh, i'm seeing that they are helping uh, because for example uh, in uh, some cases when we uh, in the advanced bim uh, projects they are, uh, comes to the as i told you the uh, some, uh, for example, flooding hazards and also some earthquake hazards. They are right now dealing better to for the engineers to design those uh, lines that pass through the uh, those kind of hazardous area. So I'm I'm seeing that they, this completely help right now. So thanks, Daniel. Um... Shepo, um, the the level for the graduate certificate, um, I'm not sh I'm not familiar with the the level that you've um, specified, but um, one of our course advisors would be best to answer that question for you. But basically, the graduate certificate is um, is is four units uh, of of our master's courses or four four master's level units. Uh, basically, and that can be studied in um, as little as six months. But in terms of the qualification levels, um, it'd be best to reach out to one of our course advisors, um, which you can do via live chat or email or phone. Um, there's a question here from Suresh Daniel. Uh, is there any guideline for the safety of railway tunnel? Uh, for the safety in tunnels, uh, RISPI has uh, some uh, 
standard on code of practice of safety investigation. And uh, also, for example, uh, there are guidelines for safety data. By the way, uh, specifically for the tunneling, uh, risk speed, uh, in the most of the cases, follow up the international standards. If they means we have definitely we have a IEC a standard uh, and EN standard for the railway safety and tunnels in the tunnels, but uh, in the Australian market, also we are right now uh, following them. Uh, by the way, we have some uh, uh, guidelines also for our tunnels. Thanks, Daniel. Um, there's a couple of questions. Roger, um, uh, for bachelor's degrees are not available online. Um, all of our bachelor's degrees are, um, are offered online and on campus. Um, so, uh, so either, yeah, you can study your bachelor's degrees fully online um, or our uh, bachelor's degrees are also offered on campus um, in Australia at our Perth, Perth Western Australia campus. Um, Ernest, there is um, there is a range of scholarships um, available at EIT. Um, they are partial scholarships, and they all have different eligibility requirements. Um, but I would recommend going recommend you going to the scholarships page um, and having a look at what ones we have available. Um, and yeah, please speak to one of our course advisors if you have uh, more questions about those. Um, there's a question here, Daniel, about um, kinetic energy and friction lost on railways. Um, is there any, is there anything that we could possibly do to, you know, uh, um, capture that energy? Uh, for the, some, it, it's uh, not a topic, but uh, I'm familiar. We have a re regenerative in the, uh, for example, electrified lines. By the way, I guess he, he, he mentioned that, for example, maybe it's not advanced, for example, railway, or maybe not. But by the way, uh, compared to other uh, modes of transportation, safest uh, transportation is railway, still it's railway, and also uh, are so most efficient right now. Uh, even we lost in uh, some, uh, for example, uh, energies. Uh, by the way, it's uh, still the uh, most in the modes of transportation and also there are advances here uh, we are facing that hyperloops uh, it's a kind of the uh, uh, for example tunnel based maglev we can say uh, magnetic levitation so uh, there are also advances in this case to uh, more efficient in the energy point of view Thanks, Daniel. Um, I'm just going to answer just a couple more questions and then we can um, wrap up the session. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Chris, unfortunately, uh, we don't have um, a bachelor's degree in railway management um, at, at the moment. Um, however, as I mentioned before, we do have graduate certificates and um, the master's degrees in, um, in railway engineering. Um, Omar, we do, uh, so, so basically, um, the video recording and the PDF slides will be sent to you via email. Um, and that's the same for everyone. Uh, I'll likely send that before the end of my day today, so which would be in the next two or three hours. Um, Ernest, unfortunately, there is no full, uh, fully funded scholarships at, um, at EIT, but uh, we do offer a range of partial scholarships. Um, Avinasha, the we have um, we have some advanced diploma um, in civil and structural engineering, which is fully online. Um, you might want to have a look at that. Otherwise, um, yeah, please reach out to one of our course advisors. Um, great, and I did repost the link for the certificate of attendance if anyone needs to still request one of those. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, 
I think we've run out of time. Um, but if anyone does have any further questions, you can always uh, reach out to me via email. Um, my email is on the screen. So webinars at eit.edu.au. Um, yeah, we really appreciate you t attending today. Um, yeah, please contact Thank us. You, and, um, yeah, thanks again, Daniel, for for such a great webinar. Um, and uh, we will uh, hopefully see everyone very soon. Have a great day wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you, guys. For the railway on telecom safety, no, we don't have. Uh, it's a uh, of Neil. We don't have. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Nice to have you again in another webinar, and hope to see you in the next webinar. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.